It is now my honor to introduce a young entrepreneur, not from this class, but he definitely has a lot that he is going to share with you today. And our wonderful, esteemed commencement speaker is Mr. Stuart Vernon. He is the president, founder, and CEO of ASP, America's Swimming Pool Company franchise. And I'm going to let you take it away now. Sure. Thank you. I don't do well with the podiums and the microphones, and so I'll just give this a shot. How's everybody doing? Great. Good. And our young entrepreneurs, how are we doing? Good. Good. Everybody excited? Yes. It's a big day. Uh, so my goal is to talk to you all today and share with you my journey, my business story, uh, my life's lessons. Um, and interestingly, I usually speak to a, a group of business professionals or a college, and I'm telling my journey from the start of my business to today. What I'm gonna to do today though is it was interesting as Nadia asked me to speak is I get to tell my business story a little bit differently. So I'm gonna tell you who we are and what we do but I'm also gonna back up and talk to you about when I was a young entrepreneur and tell you my story of how I started uh, which was very interesting for me to sit back and, and reflect on uh, again this morning. So I, I'm glad to be here. I congratulate you all on your success um, but before I get started I wanna mention one thing Programs like this obviously are very unique and to put it on and to make it all happen is an incredible feat and so I want to open by thanking the Chamber and Nadia putting this on and Mercer for allowing us to be here so thank you to the Chamber. This is great. Very very important uh, and thank you as I mentioned to all the parents too. This is without your support I don't believe it's possible to have uh, the ability to mold a, a young entrepreneur and it's very very important for our community and for the future so thank you who now this is the test to see if you pass or not who can tell me what the word entrepreneur actually means hit me hit me okay take a risk Agreed. It comes from the French verb entreprende, which means to undertake. So it's usually a business owner that is willing to undertake something, right? That's what the word entrepreneur means, and that's what it is at its heart. And that's what you've all have done to this day. And I would argue that most of you will continue to do, is to undertake and constantly be looking and thinking and innovating. Um, and that starts at a young age, and so I, I commend you with that. Um, so I'm going to back up and, and tell you. So I'm going to paint a picture of who I am today, what my business is today, and then I'm going to tell you how I got started. Um, again, the name of my business is ASP, which stands for America's Swimming Pool Company. And I have the pleasure of being able to say today that we are the nation's largest swimming pool cleaning and repair company in the country. Uh, I started this business at 22 years old right here in Macon and have grown it to today. We're a franchise brand of 100 owners in about 250 cities in 24 states. So we are the men and women that are in your backyard if you have a swimming pool, cleaning the pool and repairing the pool. It's very simply what we do. We are pool cleaners. And I franchised the brand in 2005 as a way to expand the model and expand the brand. Uh, and that's really what has led to our growth uh, to this day today. Aside from that, in my 15-year business career to this point, I bought and sold over 25 uh, houses and properties, rental houses. Um, I am the founding partner of a vehicle import business called Classic Overland. I'm a founding investor in a, a grill manufacturing company called Kudu. Some of you have heard of that company that's launched here in Macon about a year and a half ago. Uh, and I helped start an angel investment company called Central Piedmont Investment Group where we go out and provide seed money to start up businesses, hopefully in the middle Georgia area, to help them get started. Um, and the company today that I own, the pool company, is developing an app called Pool Ops. And so I'm all, all over the place, always looking, always thinking, everything from a digital software application uh, to a grill. And I think that's one of the big components to what an entrepreneur really is, is constantly looking and having your eyes open and trying to innovate and, and move forward. 
And so that's what my business looks like today. How I got started, and this is the interesting piece that I don't get to go back and, and tell often enough, um, and a lot of you, I think, can, can relate to this. So I, I can recall at about the age of 12, uh, realizing that I liked business more than I liked sports. And I very quickly transitioned out of baseball and transitioned into a car washing business at 12. And so I robbed my parents of a, a wagon and a bucket and sponges and soap. And I literally went door to door in the neighborhood and started cleaning cars and washing cars uh, and quickly realized that, you know, I liked earning a dollar. I liked making money. Right. I liked making people happy. <laughs> right. That's key. Right. That's what an entrepreneur does. And, and I think that that, to, to you parents, I'll tell you that my, I had the backing of, of my parents to help me with that encouragement. Um, it was about that first summer at age 12 or 13, I can recall staying at my grandmother's house and helping her roll coins and roll quarters and pennies. And she taught me a very, very valuable lesson that one penny leads to 100 pennies, which is a dollar, which leads to $100. And she was raising a family you know, on her own, and that was part of the way that she grew up and the way that she had to pay to live was saving pennies. And so I not only learned early on how to make a dollar, but I also learned early on the importance of saving that dollar and how to save money. I had a stockbroker uh, open my first account with car washing money that I made when I was about 13 years old. And so I'll leave you with one of the first lessons I'll leave you with is learn how to save money. Not just make it, but save it. And save it so you can use it. You never know when you'll need it. Right? Uh, by the time I was 14, uh, I was in middle school. Uh, I realized that there was a candy that a lot of my friends were eating and they loved called crybabies. And these were super, super sour. You'd eat one. Some of you, you'd not, now I got your attention. And you'd eat it, and it was super sour, and, and, and everybody loved it. But you couldn't find it in the local grocery stores around here. And so at 14, I had my mom drive me across town to the Sam's. We found where they were selling them wholesale. And I got the huge bucket of it, dumped them in my book bag, and I would sell one for 25 cents, or I'd sell five for a dollar. And so I learned very quickly early on the power of profit margin. Right? Go out and buy a lot of it for cheap and sell it one at a time. So I learned gross profit margin and I learned net profit margin from selling candy. I also learned supply and demand. When there's something in demand and you can go find it, find a way to then sell it. Right? By the time I was 16 years old, my father gave me the greatest gift though that anyone has ever given me and that was uh, the realization that I needed money. And I'll tell you how he did it. So I was fortunate enough when I turned 16 years old, he came to me and sat me down. He said, Stuart, um, I'm willing to buy you a, a used car when I turned 16. He said, I'm willing to give you the insurance. I'll put you on my insurance and you can drive that car. And the only thing that you're going to need is put gas in it. Well, to me, that sounded great, right? It was a great deal. But what did I need? I needed money to put the gas in the car, right? Greatest gift he could have given me because that then forced me to go out and get a job. I loved to play golf at that time. And so I said, well, this is great. I'll go work at the golf course. Started picking up range balls. And after about three or four days, I realized that that really was not that fun. Uh, and I wasn't playing any golf. And so I quickly thought back to washing those cars, especially after I got my first paycheck and somebody robbed me of about 35% of that paycheck, right? <laughs> Taxes. I learned quickly there too, okay? Where'd all my money go that I made? So I said, wait a minute, I could go back to when I was 13 years old. I made more money washing cars than I am now working at this prestigious golf course. This is crazy. So I'll go back to washing cars. So that was when Complete Auto Detail was born. I was 16 years old and I started a, a real car wash company. Had marketing, had a list. By the time I was 17, I had a list of over 100 well-to-do customers in the Macon area who were my regular car wash customers. By the time I was 18 and a senior in high school, I had two employees that were working for me. That's a key word there. Okay? Bringing people on, washing more cars, develop that business. And about that time, I was leaving to go to college, and I sold that business to an employee of mine. And so there was a lesson I learned early there, too, is that you can have the value of something that you build. It's valuable. You have a business that's profitable and that works. You can sell it. I learned that lesson early on, too. Fast forward a few years, I go to, uh, to college, and I'm, I'm nearing graduation, right? And it's time now to really think about what we're going to do. 
Uh, I knew for sure, though, that I had absolutely no desire to work for someone else. I think like a lot of you in this room know, uh, I knew that I wanted to start my own business when I graduated. And so it was about this time that I started calling back on some of my car wash customers that I had. Because remember, when you've got contacts and you've made business contacts, they're always going to be your contacts. Okay, remember that. They're always going to be somebody you can call back on in the future. So your contacts are very, very valuable in business. So I called on one of my, my car wash contacts and I said to him, I said, look, I'm looking to start a business. Uh, I'm graduating from college. Here's what I, here's what I want to do. Um, and he said to me, hey, I don't know anything about it, but you ought to look at the car wash. I mean, you ought to look at the uh, pool cleaning business. And he said, I don't know anything about it, but figure out, are there, is there any money to be made there? Are there anybody doing this in Macon? And so I looked into it. And I came back to him a few weeks later and made him a proposal. I said, I, I'll be your guy. You back me in the business. You put up the money, and I'll be the, the operating partner. I spent the next few months doing all the research, all the marketing materials, learning the business, studying the business. And one week before we were going to form our partnership and form our LLC, he called me up on the phone and he said, Stuart, I appreciate everything you've done, but we're going to move in a different direction. Now, 22 years old, this is one of those kick in the gut moments. I literally sit down on, on the floor because I had done all the work. I had put together all the material. I'd given them all the business planning. I had done my part to do all the heavy lifting and then they kicked me to the curb. So my business today was actually started by me being fired from this, this pool company. And so I sat down on the ground and did what most 22-year-olds would do. I picked up the phone, I called home, I called mom and dad, and I said, Dad, uh, here's the deal. You know, this is what just happened. Can you believe it? You know, I'm mad as hell. I think I'm going to still do this on my own, though. I got the business knowledge. I have the contacts. I'm going to compete with these guys. And he spent the next few minutes, as any good parent would do, and tried to talk me out of it and told me all the reasons I shouldn't and be careful competing against these guys and you, you shouldn't do it and... and, and and the world could come to an end and think about all these bad things that could happen. And I did what any 22-year-old boy would do. I said, will you please put mommy on the phone? <laughs> and she did. And about two minutes later, I had the $3,000 that I desperately needed to start this business. And that was where All Seasons Pool Company was born. And I launched that business in May 2002 and moved back to Macon to start it. And as I mentioned, I, I started franchising it in 2005, and we've grown it to, to where we are today. But the important part of that entire story is not the latter half, it's, it's how we got to that point. And as a young entrepreneur, understanding the value of a dollar, understanding the work ethic that it's going to take to build your very, very first business. But the most important lesson that I can take away from when I started and when I got fired was not to let a door being slammed in your face be the ending. When you're young, you do not have the ability to see what's on the other side of that door. Don't let it get you down because it could end up being the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Much like that was as a part of my story. So don't let things get you down because in business there is constantly going to be turmoil. There are constantly going to be things going on that are hard uh, or business deals that don't work out and you've got to learn to persevere and see the other side. Okay? The last thing I'm going to leave you with uh, is a quote that I learned in my entrepreneurship class when I was in college at 21, 22 years old, and it stuck with me today. There is no traffic on the extra mile. Okay? Think about that one for just a minute and apply it to what you're doing here. There is no traffic on the extra mile. Right? The extra mile is that time energy, effort you put in to do those things that the next person next to you is not going to do, or the next person, or the next person. And then all of a sudden you look around and there's no traffic around you. You can go faster, you can cl think clearer, make better decisions, and usually end up better off than you would have before. So think about that as you go into the world. There is no traffic on the extra mile. And I'll end and, uh, and leave you with that. Good luck.